Hi everyone, this is your host, Teresa Parker, and you're watching Area 58 Mysteries, or perhaps you're only listening to it. I've been gone for a bit, but, uh, well, this had to do over the summer where I didn't feel much like uh, recording because I was going through some medical tests. Turns out everything's good. No need to worry. That's what tests are for, to rule out other things. And um, in the meantime, I found out that I was B12 deficit. And that was the cause of my neuropathy. And that was the beginning. That was the, the impetus for, uh, for all the tests. So I'm back. I am back. I'm thinking of a song right now. Doom, 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 doom. Oh, never mind. Anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm here. I'm here to talk to you about something really interesting that I just can't let go. Now, I have written to several people in the, um, let's just say the UFO world, people that might have an understanding of what's going on. And um, I have not been able to get an answer back. No one has written me back. So I thought I'd throw it all out to you guys because, you know, you can only be in one place at one time. Everybody else can be, a, you know, a million people can be scattered and have all kinds of different um, experiences and or um, educations on the subject. Even if it's anecdotal, I want to hear about it. But um, just so I let me get this out, area58mysteries at gmail, in case you do have something you want to shoot my way. But this has to do with, um, I have a gnat in front of my face. Um, this has to do with the sighting of a craft on two occasions right here where I live. Um, I moved here in 2001 for a job. I was a deputy sheriff up in Northern California. I came down to Southern California to lateral transfer to uh, Department of Justice. And there I stayed until 2011. So... I'd already done nine years, so um, I had 20 years in. And um, at the time, this was all new to me, this terrain out here, this high desert stuff. We're at the far end, far left end, uh, left west, far west end of the Mojave des Desert. Because it wouldn't be left. It's only left because I'm facing that way. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, you know, I didn't know anything about it. We're at 3,200 feet here. I, I say we're in the toenails of the foothills, if that makes sense. Um, San Gabriel's are going that direction uh, all along uh, a long stretch of this, uh, the southern end of the Mojave. In fact, it's the kind of like the, that one border. And um, anyway, uh, as I said, all new to this type of area out here. Um, since that time, all kinds of wild things have happened here, paranormal in nature. Um, and I have gone through some of them on this pod podcast, uh, prior podcasts. Um, and uh, so when, when I heard that the previous owner's daughter had actually seen a quote unquote spacecraft out here in the desert, I wanted to hear more. Um, I've not been able to get a, uh, a proper interview with her, but I have had enough information uh, that, that she's been able to give me about it. Um, and it's a, it's a mystery. I, I have uh, written to the powers that be of different people and just haven't heard anything back and nobody seems to want to answer me, but I'm sure there is an answer. You know what I mean? There, there is. Um, at least to the question that I posed, did the government have the ability to fly these things by 1995. Um, if you know anything about Bob Lazar, he supposedly worked on the, this one craft he called the sports model. And, uh, you know, saucer shaped and everything. Um, similar, I guess, sort of kind of similar in shape to what she saw, but not really. Um, at some time uh, later, after I'd spoken to her the first time, I asked her and, uh, if she um, could point out on a, on a sheet of paper, there was lots of different illustrations of th what these crafts look like, or what people have seen, I should say, eyewitnesses. And um, she pointed out one in particular, and I will put that on this podcast. But um, she said uh, had a lot of lights, very bright. She couldn't tell if it was hovering or not. 
just sitting out there. And it was kind of in front of our neighbors to our south. We can't see our neighbors. There's a hill in the way. Um, so it's just over the hill to my south and is the neighbor's location. And so it would be across the street from her road, caddy corner from our corner. So if I had to guess how far out it was, probably less than 400 feet out, less than that, less than a quarter mile, um, definitely, um, out in the desert. She said um, that uh, it didn't make any noise. And sometime after speaking to her, I actually spoke to her mother, uh, the couple, part of the couple that, that we bought the ranch from here. Um, and she said our neighbors to the north also saw a craft, only it wasn't the same night. It was a different night altogether um, in and around 1995. And this was uh, six years before, uh, approximately, before I took ownership of the ha of this place, this, this property, uh, 10 acres. And um, so... Then, as I moved in, it wasn't, it hadn't been that long since, you know, since it had been seen. So, um, I'm going to trek up my hill so you guys can see what I'm talking about. I see the area and you'll get a much better understanding. I'm going to put, like I said, the, the illustration on here, the one she pointed out as being the one she saw in shape. It was very thin and long this way. Um, and uh and give you an idea you know um where they were uh when they were seen i have not spoken to my neighbors to the north about this um they're very private people not prone to telling stories and or much of a sense of humor uh so i tend to believe them i believe all of them actually because there's no reason not to why would somebody put themselves out and say oh yeah i saw you know craft uh in the desert um, I don't know too many people would do that, um, open themselves up to ridicule, but, uh, cause people do like to make fun, don't they? Um, that's probably why most people don't bring this stuff up, but, uh, I'm going to go up that hill, show you guys what, it, what it's all about, stick in that illustration that she showed, pointed out to me and, uh, implore you guys to write to me again, area 58 mysteries at Gmail, area 58 mysteries at Gmail. And if you know more about this, when, if, what the scuttlebutt is, uh, I don't care uh, about when we were able to fly those crafts, if ever. Um, the powers that be just, you know, they're too busy uh, trying to solve the, the problem of getting the government to cough it up. <laughs> and to date, they've given just enough so that people are like, yeah, of course we know. We've been seeing them in the sky, but, uh, you know, we'll just give you tidbits, you know, oh yeah, that, we saw a Tic Tac, but we don't know what it is. I don't know about all that. I don't know. I know they saw Tic Tacs. I don't know that they don't know what they are. They certainly would know if they're there, they're ours, of course, unless the, uh, the, the powers that be that run those programs are so bifurcated, which I understand they probably are, that you would never even know. People maybe working in the same building might not even know what's up. So there's that. Um, but uh, let me go do that. And uh, you guys are going to get to see where two crafts in the mid-90s were seen by several eyewitnesses. Stand by to stand by. Okay, so you guys see the caddy corner. The, all the trees are our property, and beyond that, you see a road to your left and a road to the to the right heading back, and you get swallowed up by that little hill there. Um, so caddy corner, just straight out and slightly to the right, is where you're going to um, want to look for where the craft was seen by the daughter who lived here. The uh, hill, you can see right there, uh, To this is looking south, right there, looking south. 
um, is to the neighbors, and her place would have been on the other side of that hill. So straight out in front of her would have been the craft. To this day, I don't believe she saw it because I've never heard anything about that. But uh, that's the area. And if you were to just look beyond all of that, follow that uh, ridge line, you'd eventually come to Palmdale where Skunk Works and uh, Lockheed and all those secret squirrel stuff is going on. So if I had to guess, as I said, I don't know how many feet out it would have been, but um, she said it was just full of lights. And uh, she wasn't at the angle I'm at now. Clearly, I'm, I'm at the top of our hill at 3,200 feet. But uh, looking down, that's where it was at, right there. Sorry about the helicopter sound. Anyway, that red dot right there is Edwards. And the gray with the black dot is uh, Skunk Works, Lockheed. And the blue dot is my location. That kind of gives you a reference of where you're looking at. And uh, I'm panning over to uh, the fence line between mine and my neighbors. This is where my neighbors said that they saw the craft hovering or between um, our two properties. And this is the only connecting line between our properties, so it had to be along this fence line right here. And uh, it's, um, you know, <laughs> interesting in that it wouldn't have been very far from our house if that were the case. Neither one were, but this would have been a lot closer. There's the other location. And then looking down along this fence line, somewhere along in here, our neighbor saw a craft. And it was the, as I said, at the same time, general time frame as the other sighting. It wasn't on the same night from what I understand. And this is the graphic that she picked out, picked out of a full page of other uh, purported um, crafts. She said this one looked the closest. She didn't say it was huge or anything, but the title was um, Cigar Shaped Mothership on this uh, graphic. This is the one she picked out and said it looked the closest to what she saw that night. 